If this protest did not happen, other protests will come. And was there a mobilization for this protest? Ladies and gentlemen, I was in the protest. I was not mobilized. Hunger has no language. Poverty has no language, whether you are in the north or in the south. And I will come back to the fact that you said there was protest in some parts in the south, 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 or maybe southeast, and uh, no, no protest in the southeast, you are talking about it. Let us look at the unity of this country. There was an issue of the militants in the south, south. President Yaradua then sorted it out by talking to them, organizing them, and rehabilitating and giving so many scholarships. He came to the, you know, we had the bandits or the, the insurgency in the north. Some people who have said we have killed thousands of people, you are rehabilitating them. You lead the good, the bad, and the ugly if you are, if, if, if you are a leader. The language of Congo, if the president can get up one day, he even forgot his speech on the inauguration day. He came up and said, subsidy is gone. What is a subsidy? We have four refineries that are not working. And then you take our crude outside and bring it back, and the poor had to pay for it. So when you tell me that subsidy is gone, I do not understand what you are talking about. My first work was as an assistant general secretary at the Nigerian Labor Congress. So I know all the issues about subsidy. So we have an NMPC without a refinery, a working refinery. Every year they have been putting a budget for the refineries in Nigeria, in, in, in the four refineries. You know, when you are producing, when you are refining oil, the byproducts for petrochemical industries, there is so many, we have the youth bonds. I always say that population is a blessing. It's not a cause. If you have population, in other climes, they are lacking population. But here we have thousands of young graduates, energy for industries, and the industries are not there. You take our money out, and then you bring back so how can you tell me, if you are buying the crude 100 and you take it out and then you purchase it again, buying the refined product 500 and you ask me to pay for it, the kind of irresponsibility and insanity we have is a test case. But they didn't know that the, 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 um, the protest will eventually happen. Let me tell you, I was at the protest, but nobody gave me a call to go and protest. I'm a woman in this country. I go to the market. Because of that singular act of Bola Ahmed Tunubu of saying subsidy is gone. One day we went to bed when the fuel was 165 and we woke up and it was 617. And Nigerians went to bed. I can't believe it because I have lived through protests. Answer the language. Bring down the fuel price. There's, you don't need to organize any meeting with anybody. Don't call me to any meeting. You didn't call any one of us to a meeting when you increase the price of, of fuel. So don't call anybody at the words of opposition were quelled because they have placated. If you show your face, they say you are the one. Are you afraid? Who are you afraid of? Uh, my junior colleague here said, I cannot sleep in my house. I will sleep in my house if you like. Even in the military, during the military, we were still protesting. We called, I was part of the team that called an extraordinary session of an, the African Commission on Human Rights for the Abacha regime. We went to the country, we went and we came back. We went to Kampala for that meeting and we came back into the country. And they allowed us into the country. They allowed negotiations. So what are we talking about? The political class. I, I want to speak one more thing that the cost of governance that we talk about. How can you have 400 people accompanying you on international journeys? And you have, in each of these countries, you have the High Commission. So why are you taking those things around?